Hi guys and girls, I'm Obsidian Ant and welcome to 3302. This is where I take a look at the news and happenings in and around Elite Dangerous. Frontier have finally announced the beta date for patches 1.6 and 2.1 and there's also been a whole bunch of new information released for these patches. There's some encouraging information for Xbox One owners of the game and in a stunning event there's a chance for a player run faction to become a galactic power. After an extreme drought of news for Elite Dangerous, Frontier finally opened the floodgates and released a whole slew of new information. The first of which was announced on Thursday, and that told us that we're going to get the beta for patches 1.6 and 2.1 on the week ending the 8th of May. So that is just three weeks, slightly less than three weeks as of this video. We don't have an exact date, but that's good enough, we know it's not that long away now. So the update is split into two different patches. Patch 1.6, which is for all the owners of Elite Dangerous, the people without Horizons. And I believe that this is also for the Xbox as well, the Xbox One version of the game. The other patch is patch 2.1. This is titled The Engineers and is for owners of Horizons. So basically, if you haven't purchased Season 2, if you don't own Horizons, you're still going to get a massive update with Patch 1.6, which introduces a lot of new elements and changes the fundamentals of the game. Let's have a quick look then at what Patch 1.6 actually includes. Now, do keep in mind that everything that is included in Patch 1.6 will also be a part of Patch 2.1. So if you've got a Horizon, you just, you'll get both of these patches. But if you haven't got a Horizons, then you'll only get a patch of 1.6. So one of the main changes for patch 1.6 is a complete restructuring of the mission system. And this will include various types of new missions as well as how to complete those missions. But what you'll notice straight up front is that the bulletin board has undergone a complete overhaul. No longer will you simply get missions just from the bulletin board as a list, they'll be given to you by NPC mission givers. In short, these people will be mission agents, through which you'll have a relationship which will determine the quality of mission that they actually give you. The better your relationship with them, the better quality missions you can get. And as your reputation improves with a particular faction, you'll get access to better quality mission agents as well. All of this has been spoken of previously and wasn't actually a part of the most recent newsletter, but what was mentioned in the newsletter is how these missions will interact with the new unidentified signal sources that will be found in space. Essentially, this change means that players will have to go out and actually actively search for the location for their mission, and this won't hopefully just be a case of randomly waiting for USSs to spawn as we do now. You'll have to go and search for it using the discovery scanner. And the system's nav beacon, if the system actually has a nav beacon, can also play an active role in this. If you do a scan of the nav beacon, it will reveal to you all the exploration data within that particular system. Now, there was also another interesting snippet of information here telling us that from uh, patch 1.6, players will actually be able to scan uh, USSs whilst in supercruise. Now, it doesn't go into detail on exactly what this means, but it does say that commanders can then make a better informed judgment of whether or not to get involved. And what this would imply to me is that we'll be able to actively see the contents of a USS before we drop out of supercruise. Something that was actually mentioned a while ago, but wasn't actively mentioned in this week's newsletter, is the graphical changes to the game. This is going to extend to asteroid fields, which are going to get improvements to all areas of graphical quality, including the fog, draw distance and a number of other things, as well as lighting within systems. All of this should be a part of the 1.6 update and be available, therefore, for all owners of Elite Dangerous. Hopefully we'll get more information on the graphical updates in upcoming newsletters. The in-game UI is also undergoing a massive overhaul, in particular for the outfitting screen. Now the newsletter did show a number of screenshots for that and I'll show them here. And this does seem to be a much more improved layout than what we've had previously. It's a lot more concise, it's a lot more cleaner and it gives us a lot more detailed information on what we want to know about the particular module or weapon. Now, I'm not going to go into too much detail on what I see here in this particular image. After all, we can all see it for ourselves. But another reason for that is that Frontier are going to be doing a live stream later on in the week. And hopefully we'll be able to get to see some of this UI in action. 
But in addition to the changes for all the players who regularly play on a monitor, it's also been massively improved for users of VR. So that's also something that should be very interesting to see. Patch 1.6 is also going to include a bunch of new weapons. In particular, these are of the huge and large variety. We'll be getting huge beam lasers, huge pulse lasers, huge multi cannons, all of these of the fixed and gimbal variety, as well as large multi cannons. For me personally, I'm quite keen to try out the large and huge multi cannons. Now, I'm also really glad to see that these weapons are part of Patch 1.6, meaning that you won't need Horizons to actually get them. One thing I do know is that players have been waiting for these particular weapons in these size varieties for a very long time now, so it's good to finally see them making their way into the game. Weapons aren't the only modules that are going to see a change. The newsletter did mention that there's going to be an improvement to drives for smaller ships. This will allow ships like the Sidewinder to go quite a bit faster than what they can do currently. Now, the newsletter did only mention the Sidewinder, but Sandro Samarco, the lead designer for Elite Dangerous, has since confirmed that this would also extend to other smaller ships, such as the Eagle, which he endearingly called the Spiegel, the Speed Eagle. Now, I'm inclined to think that these weapons changes and these module changes are not going to be the only ones we'll see in patch 1.6. There's still quite a few weeks to go until the patch actually hits in beta, so that gives a few more newsletters yet, and I suspect we'll see a few more announcements on weapons and module changes. One thing I'm really looking forward to with the next patch is the changes to the galactic map. Now the galaxy map is very good in terms of what it's able to display, but it's not always that good in terms of the information it's actually able to give you. And one thing that's particularly been missing about systems is the state that the system is in. And this would include things like war, civil war, famine, uh, boom or bust, or anything else like that. And as you can see from the image here, that is something that's going to be very much a part of the galaxy map in future in fact we'll be able to filter systems by their state so if you want to go searching for a system that's actively in war or in state of civil war maybe you're looking for conflict zones or something like that you'll be able to jump straight into the galaxy map and go and find such a system likewise filtering systems by their boom or bust state could potentially help you find good trade routes now we do know that this isn't the only change coming to the galaxy map because we're also going to be getting bookmarks as well. That's something that in my mind is long overdue. I've got a whole pile of notes all around with all sorts of information about various systems I've seen. So it's going to be great to at long last be able to actually put that right inside the game. One thing we haven't heard about yet though is a history or a travel history for the galaxy map. I'd love to be able to see a list of all the places I've actually visited and then filter the galaxy by that. I'd also like to be able to filter the galaxy map by systems that I've actually discovered, or at least planets I've discovered. Something that hopefully will come one day, and maybe, who knows, it could be a part of patch 1.6. Although Frontier haven't actually said anything on that one way or the other, so the chances are just as likely that we won't get anything on that just yet. The final change for patch 1.6 that the newsletter mentioned was enhancements to NPC AI. At the moment, there's quite a lot of things wrong with the AI. It does quite a lot of daft things. In particular, there's some bugs where the ships just sit there and rotate on their axis. That's something that's been fixed, and we're going to get ships back to their normal state. Hopefully, the ramming bug is also going to be gone. But aside from AI fixes, there's also been some substantial AI improvements. And the NPC ships are going to be a lot better when it comes to combat. In particular, the ships with a high rank. I'm especially looking forward to seeing it be an extreme challenge to take it on elite ranked anacondas. And in fact, elite ranked of any ship should be quite a challenge regardless of the ship's size. And this could perhaps make the differences between the various types of extraction site very distinct indeed. So, on to patch 2.1 then, the one titled The Engineers. We already know about The Engineers, I've spoken about that previously in other videos, and you can see those videos are linked below, do check them out if you're interested. The new information though for patch 2.1 that the newsletter mentioned is as follows. There's going to be new service encounters. Now that's something that has been mentioned before, but they haven't gone into any specific detail. But look at these images here. There's going to be more crashed ships as point of interest on the 
planetary surfaces. At the moment, you can find anacondas dotted around in various places. There is meant to be some Type 9s, and I've heard tell of a few people finding them, but I've never actually seen one myself, and I don't think I've actually seen any screenshot of crashed Type 9s. This image shows a crashed Diamondback, and that would imply that there's going to be all types of crashed and downed ships dotted around the place. This will hopefully put the interest right back in the POI and get them to be a bit more worthwhile and a bit more valuable to search out and explore. Another change to POIs is that human originated POIs, things like crash ships, things like canisters and destroyed SRVs are no longer going to be found in deep space. And this only makes sense. After all, many times I've been 30, 40, 50,000 light years away from human inhabited space and found canisters of tea and canisters of gold and other such things. And it don't make a lot of sense that you're just going to come along on them in random areas of space. But I don't know what type of point of interest that would actually leave. I think as far as I can recall at the moment, every single point of interest is human originated. Now do keep in mind that points of interest don't include things like meteoroids and other rocks that we find down on planetary surfaces. So what does that leave? Well currently points of interest include things like buildings, crashed ships, trash SRVs, canisters as well as downed SRVs and various types of black boxes. All of these of course are of human origin. So if we remove points of interest that are of human origin that actually leaves zero points of interest. So the speculation then on my part is that in deep space there could be one of two consequences to this. There's either going to be zero points of interest out there or there's going to be new types of points of interest and those new types could just include naturally occurring things or they could perhaps include stuff of alien origin. Something that's worth thinking about. With the changes to NPC AI that's going into patch 1.6, there's also going to be some changes to NPCs in patch 2.1 as well. And this is going to particularly affect NPCs on surfaces around ports where there's going to be a lot more traffic going to and from the ports. And that's going to be nice because it's going to make them a little bit more lively at the moment. They all seem a little bit lifeless. There doesn't seem much activity going on around them. Occasionally you do get the odd ship arriving and leaving, but it doesn't happen too often, so seeing an increase in traffic should be particularly nice indeed. Even better than that though, is there's going to start being some ships around some of the settlements and some of the bases. These will act as air defence and will totally change the combat dynamic around these bases. At the moment it's simply possible to fly over the top and launch a volley of missiles at the bases totally annihilating. With the presence of ships around the planetary surface ports and these settlements, that's going to totally change this. And it could also mean that we will get NPC to play a dogfights over planetary surfaces something I've long been looking forward to. And let's not forget that having ships around bases like this will dramatically shake up base assaults. Now, the headline feature for patch 2.1 is the engineers, and the engineers are able to adapt and alter modules and weapons for us. And a few of these features have been revealed. These are experimental weapon changes. One of them is healing weapons, where if you target a wing member with your weapon, it will actually heal them rather than hurt them. Another one is thermal weapons. These can cause heat build up in your opponent. You shoot this particular weapon at them and it will cause additional heat build up within their ship. And the third modification to be revealed is one called a force shell. And what this does is it impacts upon the opponent's ship with such force that it causes it to veer off course. Now apparently these modifications won't be that easy to obtain. To start with you'll need to find a particular engineer and that may not be that easy and they may not even have much interest in talking to you unless you meet specific requirements. And in addition to that you may even need to level up your reputation with them a bit before they'll start doing these type of modifications for you. In either event you'll need special resources as well, somewhat rare resources on occasion that can only be found on planetary surfaces or sometimes in mission specific USSs within in space. It's even possible that such resources could be granted as a mission reward. So aside from the actual effect of these weapon changes, as well as some nice visual changes depending on the type of weapon that you actually use, it does call into question that the massive changes that these will bring to gameplay, both in terms of PvE as well as PvP. Now I may be completely off base with this, 
but it really does open up the gaze to the idea of the Holy Trinity that's prevalent within many other MMOs out there. In particular, World of Warcraft and games of that nature, where a group would have a healer, a tank and a damage dealer. Frontier, over the course of the game's development, have steered the game far wide of going down that type of route. And in fact, back during the early days of development, there were a number of discussions where this subject came up, and Frontier said that they really didn't want to take the game down that type of route. Now, I'm not saying that is where the game is going to head. I'm not even saying it's necessarily a bad thing. But in either event, it's hard to argue that this isn't a first step towards something like that, potentially. My bet is that sooner or later one of these weapon modifications will enable a player to freeze or web an opponent's ship, freezing them in place and essentially stunning them. I also think it quite likely that there will either be a modification, a module or a weapon that will allow you to recharge your ship's energy, basically acting like a mana potion. Again, these parts are purely speculation on my part. But, well, it seems we're going down that sort of path. It seems that these changes are the first step towards that. Of course, though, like I say, that's speculation, so I will simply step back and reserve judgment and wait and see if that ever happens. Finally, for changes introduced into patch 2.1, there should be some graphical changes down on the surface of planets. Now we know from a previous newsletter that one of the changes will be the introduction of tyre tracks down on planets. And if we take a look at the crashed diamond back here, you can see that there's some tyre tracks down there as well. Now this does seem to be a screenshot from a development version of the game, but there's a chance that it may have been enhanced a little bit. If we take a look at the one of the cannons, for example, you can see there's a slight depth of field effect on here. And Elite doesn't actually have a depth of field effect. Unless, of course, that is going to be introduced into the game and hasn't been announced yet, then it would suggest that this image has been enhanced a little bit in post-processing. So for now, we can't really say one way or another whether the tyre tracks in this image are actually there already or whether they're added in post-processing or whether they're a result of this particular SRV having driven around a bit. But if you do pay attention to the rocks around the diamond back there, you can see they look much, much better than any rock formation we currently have in the game. And indeed, if you look at the other rocks, the smaller rocks in this image here, you'll notice that they also look a lot better. Mostly in-game at the moment on the surface of the planets, there's a colour mismatch between the small rocks and the planetary surface, and that doesn't appear to be present here at all. Of course, that could simply be down to the lighting in this particular scene. The star, after all, here is very low on the horizon, and that could cause that to happen. But I'm actually hoping that there's been some graphical improvements to the rocks, as they stand out a little bit like a sore thumb at the moment, so an improvement there would go a long way to dramatically improving the quality of the surface graphics. So that wraps up all the new announcements that we've had for patch 1.6 as well as a patch 2.1. On Thursday the 21st of April at 7pm BST, that's British Summertime, or 6pm GMT, there's going to be a Frontier live stream with Edward Lewis and Michael Brooks, the executive producer for Elite Dangerous. And they're going to be doing a Q&A session for the upcoming patches where they'll be answering a load of questions as well as showing some content from the patches themselves. So that stream should be well worth watching. And if you're at all interested in that and would like to go check it out, I've included all the information below to where you can find it and when it's going to be. There's going to be a massive change coming to the powers within the galaxy. Frontier have announced that there's an upcoming competition for a faction, a player faction at that, to become a power. Now, this is going to be a massive event spread over a course of four weeks where five factions will compete for this privilege of becoming a power. These five factions have already been chosen by Frontier based on a number of factors, including their expansion and influence within the game, as well as a number of other things. The event is going to be called The Dangerous Games Rise to Power. And it's going to be held across four weeks. Each week will have a new type of community goal and the various groups will take part in that, competing against each other. The event is due to start on the 30th of June. Now Frontier have also said that there's room for an additional group to participate in the event. This group will be a wild card, one that's not been chosen by Frontier but will instead be chosen by players. This wildcard faction will be able to participate in the final event, the Rise to Power, for a chance to become the first player-created power within the game. 
Now, it's not going to be that simple for a faction to become the wild card. To start with, they've got to register with Frontier. They've got to be an already existing faction within the game, an existing player-run faction within the game. That has already expanded at least once. If they meet these requirements, they can send an email to Frontier, who will then consider them for entrance into the wildcard event. Once this is done, Frontier will create a list that they'll put on the forums, a list of all the factions, which the community will then be able to vote on. The top five winners of this will go through to the wildcard event. The wildcard event is due to start on the 12th of May and will play out on the beta servers. Now, if the player doesn't have beta access, Frontier are considering at the moment, it's not confirmed, but they're considering that they may be able to give beta access to all the participants of that particular faction. This wildcard event will then play out in the same way as the final event. The winner will go through to the final event, the Rise to Power, and will be able to directly compete against the other five factions. So this is quite an interesting turnout for uh, player on factions and it's going to be especially nice for whoever wins and ends up being the galaxy's first player created power. Finally, there's some good news for Xbox One owners. Earlier on we discussed the upcoming changes for patch 1.6, all of which are going to be available to Xbox One players, but there's a few additional changes coming to the Xbox. One of these is the addition of three new languages, being French, German and Russian. There's also going to be the introduction of private groups, something that Xbox One players can't currently do at the moment. But with patch 1.6, Xbox players will be able to create and join private groups. It may seem crazy to think that currently Xbox One players are unable to customise their controller input, but that's something that's also going to change with patch 1.6, Finally, they will be able to customise all of their controller inputs, something that should perhaps have been there right from the start, but nonetheless it's coming and that should be a nice change indeed. And there's also going to be the introduction of game extras, when this includes paint jobs as well as bobbleheads. Frontier have also teased what they're classing as an exciting announcement for Xbox One players, something that's going to be announced in the very near future. Now, this can really only be one of two things, one of them are much more likely than the other. The most likely scenario is that this is going to be the announcement of Horizons for the Xbox. Another announcement could perhaps be that it's going to be the introduction of cross-play between Xbox and PC, but I think that's quite unlikely. Xbox One players have been waiting a very long time for any announcements or changes to their game. If us PC players have thought that the news spell has been dry the past few weeks, well, that's nothing compared to what Xbox One players have had to put up with. So all of this should be fantastic news for them. Finally, I'd like to briefly mention a player-run event, the Sagittarius Carina Mission. And it's being organised by the First Great Expedition. This is what their forum post has to say about it. It is the aim of this mission to explore an area corresponding to a semi-circumnavigation of the galaxy, the Sagittarius Carina Arm and the Sagittarius Constellation and by doing this, collect points of interest for the Galactic Mapping Project. Any explorer is welcome to join for only a part of this voyage or for the entire planned route at their own pace. All participants should sign up in the list of participants. And we encourage you to also sign up at the FG forums and say hello. So I've linked those details below. If that sounds at all interesting you, do go and check it out. So, quite a lot of news this week then, and there should be a whole lot more over the coming weeks as Frontier ramp up towards the beta release of the upcoming patches. Something I'm really looking forward to, and of course I'll be bringing you videos covering all of this. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time. Hi guys and girls, I'm Obsidian Ant, and welcome to Exploring Elite Dangerous Episode 44. I'm here right on the opposite side of the galaxy with Commander Pompeii and this was Waypoint 19 on the Distant Worlds Expeditions. Quite a while ago now, it's taken me until now to finally get this footage put together into an episode. As of this moment, the fleet itself is rapidly approaching the final destination at Beagle Point.